All right, so a couple of days ago, the tech fam and I uploaded our $600 ray tracing on a budget builds. Make sure you check out those videos if you haven't already, but those builds were purely just for the competition and they weren't really practical. So I modified my build to be a $350 build that actually makes sense. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be checking out my $350 build guide of both new and used parts, and then we're gonna benchmark 10 games to see how it performs. And if you're new here and you wanna see more PC building or benchmarking videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly share with you guys how I actually paid for Windows 10 for this PC. YourCDKey.com is an official online platform that sells all types of keys, including official Microsoft Windows keys, game keys such as Steam, Origin and Uplay, and they're actually running a pretty legit spring sale with some really good prices. Your CD key is also hooking you guys up with a crazy 20% off sale if you use my discount code ZTT20. For those of you that are still rocking an unactivated version of Windows 10, type in Windows 10 Pro at the top, click buy now, and enter the discount code ZTT20, and as you can see here, that drops the price down to less than $12, which is amazing. This is actually the exact method that I personally use to fully license Windows 10 on this build so I can indeed confirm that it works. Head on down to the first links in the description for both Windows 10 and even Microsoft Office which drops down to just $31 with my discount code ZTT20. Alright so first up I want to quickly take a tour around what parts are in this build, talk about how much I paid for them, and then we'll benchmark 10 games to see how it's performing. The first part up is actually a CPU, motherboard, RAM, and CPU cooler combo which I paid for $119 off eBay. The CPU is an i5-3570 which is rocking 4 cores and four threads that boost up to 3.8 gigahertz. There's two four gigabyte DDR3 RAM sticks in there and this super ugly looking motherboard from Lenovo and I really don't know anything else about it. Eight gigabytes of RAM is actually starting to show its limitations here in 2019. So I purchased another eight gigabyte kit of DDR3 RAM for just 16 bucks off eBay. Next up we have the graphics card and instead of the ridiculous RTX 2060 like I had in there over the weekend, I decided to slot in an EVGA GTX 780 Ti which I picked up for $80 off EVGA B stock. The 780 Ti and 3570 was actually a pretty popular combination back a few years ago and if you can't find it on B stock then I saw that the average sale price on eBay was around $80 as well. One thing to note is that the card definitely requires a lot of power so that's why I went with this Corsair TX850 which I found for such a great deal off eBay for 30 bucks. Following that we have the storage and I decided to keep the brand new 240 gigabyte inland SSD in there as a boot drive but I also added a Western Digital Green 2 terabyte hard drive that I found off eBay as well and that way you can store all of your games and media. And finally the last part on this list is the case and this here is the DIY PC Crystal P3 which I bought new off Newegg for $53. Keep in mind that if you want the best bang for your buck performance you don't need to spend this much money on a case but I think it makes the build look baller so the money is justified for me. With the parts list out of the way it's now time for the benchmarks and just as a reminder the settings that you're about to see for each game are the settings that I would personally use if this was my system. The first game up was none of other than Apex Legends and here I used 1080p and medium settings and got a very smooth FPS average of 74 and this was indeed tested during an actual online match so these are the results that you should expect. Make sure you check out my dedicated benchmarking video for this game also if you haven't already. Following that was Fortnite and also in 1080p and medium settings here I got an FPS average of 135 which is great but I would really recommend capping the frame rate at 60 or even 120 depending on your monitor's refresh rate that'll help raise that 0.1% low. The next game up was Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and again in 1080p and medium settings I got an 87 FPS average. These were really great numbers but unfortunately that didn't help me get completely sniped from behind making me look like an absolute noob. Counter-Strike Global Offensive was up next and in 1080p and high settings I got an average of 88 frames per second. CSGO is definitely one of those insanely CPU demanding games and if you're rocking a higher refresh rate monitor I would definitely knock it down to medium settings. Rainbow Six Siege followed up next and with the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p and ultra settings I got an impressive of 124 FPS average, this one always runs silky smooth during my benchmarking videos. And for our last easier to run game, Rocket League was up next and in 1080p with high quality and high quality render detail, I got an FPS average of 171 and I actually scored 6 goals during this benchmarking game so I was feeling like an absolute boss. Battlefield 5 was up next and in 1080p medium settings with DirectX 12 turned on, I got an average frame rate of 81 FPS, this one played smoothly and looked great. Following that was Monster Hunter World and in 
in 1080p and medium settings, I actually got an average of 65 and I didn't really expect this system to perform this well on this very demanding game. After that I tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider, this one is definitely a tough one to run, and in 1080p and medium settings I averaged 53 FPS. This one you gotta watch out for though because in some zones I averaged 80 FPS and only 40 in some, it really depends on where you're at in the map for this game. And finally the last game was Far Cry New Dawn and with the built in benchmarking tool in 1080p and normal slash medium settings I got a very smooth 62 FPS average. So those are the results, as you can clearly see, this $350 gaming PC is getting really good numbers for 1080p gaming and I think it's safe to say that this is packing way more value than the $600 ray tracing build that it originated from. Just remember that the 3570 is certainly a very capable processor still here in 2019, but for really CPU demanding titles like Assassin's Creed Odyssey or CSGO, it is going to be holding the monster 780 Ti back by just a little. Well there you have it, that wraps up my $350 build guide. As always, make sure you guys drop a comment down below of what you personally think about this build or what you would do to change it. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next, I got some more build guides coming. You don't want to miss those videos.